Hi, I've been flying a lot over the last few weeks and in this particular video I will look at the six Air Vistara flights I took in the space of eight days. There were two sets of return flights from Delhi to Bengaluru and one return flight from Delhi to Chandigarh. Starting with flight number one, UK 819 between Delhi and Bengaluru operated on a A321neo Victor Tango Tango Victor Charlie. The flight was scheduled for 2.15 departure in the afternoon but I got to the airport really early fearing a human traffic jam both to enter the airport and at security. This gave me enough time to go enjoy a beer and have a smoke at the smoking room with a lovely view of the domestic air site and you can see now just how much Vistara has grown. The four A321neos in Air Vistara's fleet all come equipped with seatback screens. These are the Panasonic systems and Vistara's in-flight offerings are fairly limited to be very honest but enough for a short or medium haul flight. People who have flown them long haul to London and Frankfurt or Paris have complained about the slim pickings on the in-flight entertainment. You get your standard fare from Big Bang Theory and Friends and How I Met Your Mother but the movie selection is quite limited. I ended up watching the Seth Rogen movie An American Pickle. Oh, well, stuff you only watch on aircraft I guess. took off from Delhi's southernmost runway, runway 29, before taking a left turn to head almost straight down south at a heading of 180 towards Bengaluru. Soon after takeoff, we could look at the industrialized areas of Gurugram and Manisar with several factories below us. It was fascinating to see a lot of the new infrastructure build out occurring all over India. I have noticed this in my other videos as well and in this video you could see construction on the new Delhi Mumbai Expressway that will reduce driving time between Delhi and Mumbai to just 12 hours. I enjoyed the movie for about an hour and a half and in between the movie we were offered lunch. On this flight we got a dal makhani and a chicken biryani. It wasn't bad at all. I also played around with the in-flight map system on Air Vistara. These Panasonic maps are really quite nice and you get to see this great cockpit view with the cockpit heads up display. Uh, of course, the maps haven't been adapted from the Boeing 787 and we were on an A321 after all, but it is a pretty cool map. I enjoyed watching the maps looking out of the window as well as listening to some music for the last one hour of the flight before we began our approach to Bengaluru airport from the east. It was a rare runway 9 arrival which usually only occurs in the afternoons and evenings in Bengaluru. We came in over National Highway 44 where I'd be driving the very next day. This is the National Highway that connects Bengaluru with the its other tech IT hub twin of Hyderabad. Bengaluru Airport is in the midst of a massive reconstruction project and there are just not enough gates at the domestic terminal. They're building a new Terminal 2 mainly for international flights as well as extending Terminal 1. But because they weren't enough gates, we had to disembark the plane using the air stairs and before you knew it, we were on a long bus ride to the arrivals hall. The bus has to go take a roundabout and come back, which makes the bus ride really, really long, but it afforded us some great views of all sorts of aircraft mainly AC20neos from Indigo. Hi, 
Hi, I'm flying on Vistara 802 today from Bangalore to Delhi. And what you see behind me are the Digi Yatra gates at the gate of the airport. Now, I just registered for Digi Yatra because this particular flight uh, is the pilot flight for Digi Yatra. This let me register with my face uh, without a mask and my specs. And I got entry into the airport, I got fast track to security. It was superb. I don't know if I have to do this again to enter the plane, uh, if these gates will work or not. But this is, uh, unsurprisingly, it's in Bangalore, uh, tech capital of India. I believe Hyderabad also has this service, but it's only piloting on very few flights. Um, I don't know, Vistara and Vistara is the only airline doing it. I'm sorry for the noise. Um, they are rebuilding this airport pretty much. But this is pretty fascinating. Uh, and I am really looking forward to seeing if it works again. Short answer, I just had to have my face scanned to board the aircraft. The aircraft we are flying today was Tango Quebec Hotel, a seven month old A320 Neo. This was the second hard product of Avistara I was flying on. And um, this had the newer H320neo hard product, which includes a USB charging point and a mobile device holder in the seat. But leg room was very limited, to be very honest. UK802 conducted a runway 27 departure heading west over Nandi Hills before turning north again almost on an exactly northern track and flying straight towards Delhi. The flight was as such uneventful and I managed to take a glance through Vistara's in-flight magazine. It's very nice that Vistara has brought back a printed magazine on board unlike many other airlines have, that have used the COVID pandemic as an opportunity to get rid of in-flight magazines. Like it or not, I really enjoy in-flight magazines. I mean, they give you something to read and you get to see pictures of exotic places that you might never ever travel to in your life. It's always nice. I don't know about you, do you like in-flight magazines? If you do, do leave a comment. And what do you like reading in in-flight magazines? You know, I've been a contributor to them in the past and I'd really like to know uh, why you think in-flight magazines should survive and what their USP is going in the digital age. The next afternoon, I found myself back at Delhi Airport Terminal 3, this time to fly on UK 706 between Delhi and Chandigarh. It's only a 250 km long flight that takes half an hour, but the taxi from Terminal 3's domestic pier to the threshold of runway 28 took almost as long as the flight. Um, at the afternoon time, there is not much of a rush at Delhi Airport, so security and check-in took no time and I found myself back at the Heineken bar to enjoy yet another beer because I had reached the airport far too early, misreading my boarding time as the actual departure time. Oh well, such is life. We were flying on board Victor Tango, Tango Victor Delta. Vistara's newest A321 Neo. This, like all other A321 Neos in the fleet, also had the seatback screen and the great maps and the IFV system. Very nice, but not really a long enough flight for me to enjoy it. But I really did enjoy our approach 
into Chandigarh Airport over the fields of Haryana and Punjab. Now Chandigarh Airport is the Indian Air Force's largest logistics base in North India and as such taking pictures on videos on the air side are not allowed so I cut the landing video off just as we touch down. Keep on watching for the return flight now from Chandigarh to Delhi. Like many other Indian airport terminals nowadays, Chandigarh Airport is also a glass and steel structure. It looks like the government used a cookie cutter shape to design all these airports. By the government, I mean the Airports Authority of India, which runs and coordinates most airports other than the largest ones in Delhi, Mumbai, Hyderabad and Bengaluru. So this is my fourth Vistara flight in four days and this is the third Vistara economy hard product in those four flights. I did two flights on the AC21 Neos which have the same hard product. Uh, this is on the AC20 Neo Tango November Hotel that has the old economy class product that was there on the AC20 CEOs and the early AC20 Neos. As you will see, there is no USB charger. It's also laid out differently. Uh, before, uh, your bring your own device entertainment became commonplace, even though this uh, aircraft does have uh, streaming in-flight entertainment using bring your own device. It's a short flight, so it won't really matter, but it really sucks to get this aircraft on a longer sector compared to what you get on the other sectors. On these short flights that last less than an hour, Air Vistara hands out a snack box. Unfortunately, I think the snacks box are overly sweet, loaded with just candy and chocolates. After two nights at home with the family, I was back at Delhi Terminal 3, this time to catch UK 815 between Delhi and Bengaluru. This is a morning service that takes off at 8.05 a.m. and we are taking off from gate 36 at the very end of the pier at Delhi Terminal 3. But this was the shorter pier, thankfully. On this two hour, 20 minute long flight between Delhi and Bengaluru, we were served a breakfast consisting of an omelette, baked beans and potatoes. Pretty similar to the breakfast I got on Air India 665 between Delhi and Mumbai recently because they were both catered by SATS. Pretty decent flight and what made it really unique towards the end was our approach into Bengaluru because I landed on Bengaluru's southern runway that is 27 left for the very first time uh, even though unfortunately i was sitting on the right hand side of the plane i didn't get to see the construction of terminal 2 very clearly but i got a great view of that from my hotel which had a i was staying at the taj bengaluru which is the airport hotel and all around the taj bengaluru you could see the access roads being built and from the swimming pool deck you got a great overview of Terminal 2, the new international terminal at Bengaluru Airport. The old Terminal 1, which operates both domestic and international flights right now, will be converted into a completely domestic terminal. And the airport plans to build a transit service between the two terminals. There will also be an expansion of Terminal 1 and the build out of a new parking area under the ground.
Bangalore Airport again doing Digi Yatra again. It's really smoothens out the entry into the airport. It's only running from UK 802, the six city Visara departure to Delhi for some strange reason, no other flight. Um, and my registration last week did not work again this week. I had to register again. Uh, but again, it's a super smooth process. Saved me at least 20 minutes already by avoiding the entrance queue to the airport. Uh, GD Pizza is only working on one flight right now. But would you give up your facial recognition for convenience? I would. I did. I'm doing it a second time. They should store it. But then let's see how it goes. It worked just fine, but before that, I also got to try out the new 080 lounge at Bengaluru Airport. It is really very nice. Uh, today, I was flying on Victor Tango, Alpha Tango Victor, the retro jet of Air Vistara. While this plane looks very cool from the outside, the interior economy class product is still the oldest economy hard product on Air Vistara. I don't see how long Vistara can sustain having three different hard products in economy class on their domestic flights. We took off from runway 27 right and immediately took a right turn. I had taken a window seat in the Alpha row which meant I was facing west and in summer and the monsoons in India if you have a west facing window seat in the evenings you are afforded some of the most spectacular sunset views as the clouds come in and they cover the sun. I've seen some of the most spectacular sunsets flying during this time and this flight was no different. The sunset was spectacular. As such, it was a fairly uneventful flight as I was fairly tired after so much flying. I pretty much dozed off and I was woken just for dinner, which are where I got the chicken biryani once again. But a very healthy portion of chicken, I must admit. I fell asleep again and was woken up to straighten my seat back as we approached Delhi. Do like, comment and subscribe. Would you fly on Air Vistara?